Welcome back, Quarantographers. I hope you all had a lovely weekend. I had a really great suggestion for a reverse engineering episode from one of our Quarantographers, Shelby Moore. Thank you very much. He's a really great photographer. I've really been enjoying talking to him and others in the Patreon subscribers Discord. And he had a really great question. Uh, it, it's about a sort of style that's been going around for a while now thanks to a photographer known as Grant Cornett. Grant is a travel and food and portrait photographer who very graciously allowed me to break down his work in this episode, so thank you for that, Grant. I've been a fan of his work for a while. You can kind of see his influence in some of my stuff as well. He has a sort of colorful, high dynamic range aesthetic. So I'm in kind of a uniquely okay position to break these images down. But nonetheless, it was still fun to play with it and more directly try and mimic his style and really break down what makes a Grant Cornett image a Grant Cornett image. So I've pulled down a few inspiration images from his site that I feel like really show off Grant's style and give me the sort of information I need to start pulling it apart and figuring out how to mimic it. Grant has a, a talent for styling, and I assume he has a stylist for much of these images, but I get the sense he's inspired by very classical still life paintings, those big overflowing tables and full of rabbits and grapes and all that fun stuff. However, he's put a really unique spin on that very classical look by bringing in this colorful, modern, hyper lit, hyper HDR aesthetic. So I'm gonna start breaking down the things here that are hints to me if I'm trying to replicate this look. First thing, subject. As I mentioned, he's very into food and that's kind of what we're focusing on here today. I'm not gonna go for his portrait stuff at the moment because I feel like a lot of these, these techniques will carry over when you do look at a portrait and it's just better to focus for the moment. Coming back to that classical look, you see drapery in a lot of these images. We've got great textures, we've got really beautiful materiality and you notice that there's very little paper, if at all, this background might be a paper backdrop, but he really prefers to use, this is some sort of glass or reflective material. Even this backdrop here is not paper. It appears to be some sort of, of fabric. So he's very, he's very concerned about the materiality in his image. So just using a, a paper backdrop really won't cut it if you're trying to mimic this look. You have to really think about the materials. He loves glass and the transmissive and reflective properties of glass. And you see this every once in a while, he'll leave a, a fun little uh, mistake mistake in the image. Something that adds a little bit of texture. I don't know if I pulled the other image where I saw it, but you'll occasionally see little remples or wrinkles in his fabric, which I kind of love, just kind of to emphasize this materiality. It all comes back to a very classical sense of drapery. Strong, highly stylized compositions are another huge thing for him. And you'll notice that he also kind of likes things to be a little off-putting, perhaps not necessarily the most beautiful things. This fish jello mold, here, that's, you know, not your typical beautiful table spread. But you can tell not just in the jello molds, but in the colors, he's inspired by a lot of these gross jello mold cookbooks. So that's really fun. He's got a great sense of humor, and that's that's a big part of it. This is just a, a guess, but I'm starting to see it around a lot, and I use it a lot in my own work. I have a feeling, just based on looking at his highlights, especially in this image, he's using what's called a black promist filter. Uh, it's just something that adds a little bit of kind of bloomed highlights and uh, adds a a sort of filmic look to things. So looking at light, you can see that he very much favors hard shadows, which means small light sources. Another hard shadow here, hard shadows here. The shadows themselves are important compositional elements. Shadows here not so much, but based on the reflections here, you can tell that the lighting is still on the harsh side. Given that it's a reflective surface, you may not even be able to see the shadows. Hard shadows here. Another thing that you don't see much with even other photographers who like to play with hard shadows is multiple hard shadows. And that's a really great clue here. We got one going off this way, one going off this way. And you see this a bit with Grant's images, one very sidey light and one kind of 45 degree, slightly off kilter light. Can't really see it here as much. You actually don't see as many hard shadows as one here, I guess. But that's also partly because, big hint here, you can see reflected in the bottles, the entire lighting setup. He's using a para, at least one para and one hard light. That seems to be his lighting setup here. This one only has the one shadow. This one has the two shadows. One from the side, one from more frontal. Here we are, another two shadows. One from the feet going this way, another going this way. So when you're trying to mimic 
make this light, consider this is the wrong he has chosen. Having a slightly messy shadow situation. Finally, there's often a tension between the colors in the highlights and the shadows. Take a look at this image, for instance. All the shadows here have a strong blue or turquoise feeling to them compared to the more warm tones around them. That one, a little more neutral. Here the shadows are feeling very magenta. That could be either because the fill is magenta or because there are magenta tones on the ground surface here that are coming out more in the shadows. But I'm willing to bet he has something gelled on his fill. Even here, you can see that this particular shadow is reading a bit bluer than this one. So there may be a subtle third blue fill here. I almost forgot there's one other very important thing about this photo style, and that's the processing. I've heard this style of photography described as HDR in nature, and I don't think that's entirely inaccurate. Back in the early days of digital, HDR required painstaking stacking of images, but nowadays the dynamic range of our sensors is by default so great that you can really get a pretty HDR image out of a single frame. It's going to sound stupidly easy, but here it is. Drag the shadows way up, drag the highlights way down, increase clarity, increase contrast, and that is the look. You'll see me get into that later. But using all that, let's go to the studio and let's uh, see what we can get. For this image, I've decided to photograph one of my new favorite, old favorite drinks that I kind of forgot I loved. It's a whiskey sour, here made with lemon juice and egg whites. I figured the lemons would be very graphic, as would the egg I decided I'd do eventually use. The egg uh, being my attempt to put something slightly off-putting into the image, a la Grant Cornette. But that'll come later. For now, what I've done is I've set up a mirror, and I've covered it in a sheet. Just trying to slightly mimic the materiality and drapery of Grant's work. I've set up a 100 millimeter lens here. I find that going with a longer lens provides this kind of more objective, orthogonal view. That it kind of has this kind of separated vibe that I'm getting from Grant's work. It's not the kind of super in-your-face, wide-angle view that you sometimes get. It's more objective and removed. So I've gone with the longest lens I own, 100 mil, great lens. Here I've set up my first light. It's a speed light so I can get as hard of a shadow as possible. And uh, as you can see, I've set it up at a pretty hard angle. It's almost 90 degrees. It's probably more like 75 from the camera. But in many of Grant's images, one of the two main lights is pretty hard off and then the secondary one is fairly close to the camera. That's what I'm setting up here. Here I am setting up a second speed light to get that two shadow look I noted before. I want to get it high enough so that the tripod does not cast a shadow. Because of that two shadow thing, I've decided to try and make these two speed lights at about the same exposure. So here I am, it looks like I'm actually filling in those shadows pretty strongly. And then now that I have those two lights dialed in, I'm going to put a little bit of post-processing on it. First thing I'm doing is cranking up the contrast, then I'm dropping the highlights, raising the shadows, cranking the clarity, checking my inspo, dropping the whites, cranking the blacks, dropping the contrast a little bit, increasing saturation, and generally warming up the image. Now I'm feeling like I'm pretty close, and now I'm going to start gelling my lights. Here I am adding a deep purple gel to one of my keys here. Note how subtle that is. Once again, if you have other neutral colored lights in your scene, gelling will have a more subtle effect than you might think. So here I am setting up a third light. What I'm trying to do is add a little bit of color to the shadows. As you see that lemon in the upper right is casting a neutral colored shadow, I'd like it to be more blue to go with one of our inspo images. So I've got this deep blue turquoisey gel here. And normally if I was just trying to mess with a fill like this, I would go for a soft fill, maybe blast it into the ceiling, maybe put it in a soft box. But I have a hunch that Grant likes hard lights so much that even his fill is going to be a hard light. 
So I'm turning this on fairly bright, directly pointed at our subject, and blue. And I really like what it's done to the background. The mirror, this painting in the backdrop is fully turquoise and it's got this window effect. That was kind of unintended, but I love it. And you can start seeing a little bit of that turquoise in the shadows. Egg whites are a key ingredient in a sour, so I've added some eggs. And I've replaced the apple with the glass I'm going to be using. To my taste, I wasn't fully feeling the turquoise, so I swapped it for a red gel. And I kind of like the intensity here. The only issue is that the lemons are coming off a little too orange due to this light. I'm going to keep playing. And what I land on here is a little bit of basic color theory. I wanted the lemons to pop, and yellow's complement is purple. So I took more of that deep purple gel, and I put it over this fill light, and I really like the effect here. Here my flash actually fails to fire, and I note that there's so much ambient. The sun has started coming through this window, and the way these shadows have been pulled up, this is how it looks because of all these crazy shadow and highlight HDR stuff. All these details are just lurking in the shadow of a completely unlit image. So though I do like the way this image looks, just for purity's sake, I'm going to cover my windows with black. I feel good enough that I've swapped my empty glass for one with a fresh ice cube. I've made my drink, and as soon as it is poured, I'm going to hit that shutter. Not bad, not a bad shot. I could be happy with just this, but I'm gonna add a little bit of that Grant Cornette off-putting element and I've cracked an egg on this mirror. I really like the effect this is having. I'm glad I didn't break the yolk, and now I'm just pushing it around, trying to find the right composition. I don't like that the yolk is in shadow from my glass now, so I'm gonna try and move that around. And given that the drink is kept pretty well, once it had the lockdown version, I figured I might as well play around a little bit. I went off sticks here, and I, I like a lot of these extra shots I've gotten. Sometimes the first impulse you have is not necessarily the best one. There's another one where the flash didn't go off. Fascinating. I really like these horizontals. I think they're interesting. Another interesting thing I didn't see in the original setup is how wonderfully purple the shadows are in front. That's a happy little accident. The way these lights are front of my drapery is only being hit by that purple fill. It's very cool. Thank you so much everybody for joining me on this. It was a tremendous amount of fun getting to make a drink in the middle of the day. It was delicious as it looked. And I feel like we got pretty close. I'm proud of it. I feel like I learned something about this look. I definitely have a couple more tools in my toolkit that I can access when I need to. And above all, I'm just happy with the images. So. This was great for me. I hope this has been inspiring for you. I'd love to see your attempts at this light. I'd love to see your requests for more light setups. But overall, thank you so much for tuning in. If you want to get involved in the discussion, please subscribe on Patreon. We have a wonderful Discord where I'm always around and available for chatting. But until next time, stay safe, stay sane, stay inside, stay shooting. Thank you very much.